this month, ITV correspondent Paul Brand told us about his extraordinary search for patient zero, John Eady, the first person in Britain to die of AIDS. And after it was broadcast, Paul was contacted by some of John's relatives, including his niece, Karen. And Karen had been searching for her uncle for 40 years. Lorna Shaddick explains how it all happened. When Paul Brand eventually found the first patient in Britain to die from AIDS, he didn't realise he'd also ended another long search. I saw the item where you just showed the death certificate and I thought, I recognise that. So I rushed to the cupboard, pulled out the death certificate and I was going, oh my God, it's the same person. That's my uncle. <laughs> Karen Legg had been looking for her uncle John for four decades. Good grief. Do you know, he looks so much like my dad in that one. Karen's own father had been adopted and he asked her to find out more about his family. She discovered he had six siblings, all of them adopted too. And though she found out quite a lot about five of them, she'd only managed to track down the name of the sixth, John Eady, until Paul's documentary, which revealed her Uncle John's whole story. I have actually fulfilled my promise to my dad and that means such a lot to me. Two other relatives, Paul and Pam, John's adoptive niece and nephew, also came forward after seeing the programme. <laughs> oh, it's lovely to meet you and you. and you. All three were finally able to lay flowers on the grave of a man who may have died alone, but whose story has now touched millions. Uh, well, we're joined now by our UK editor, Paul Brand, and by Karen Legg, John Eady's long-lost niece. Karen, got to come to you. I mean, this is a fantastic story. It's sort of... It, there's sadness and joy in this, really, as well. It, you know, what did you feel when you were watching Paul's documentary and you've been searching for Uncle John all these years and, and then you see this on ITV? What did you think at that moment? I was actually very shocked. Um, when they said the name, I thought, oh, I've got that name in my family tree. But it was then at that point where I saw a copy of the death certificate, I realised that actually this John was actually my uncle John and he'd been elusive and just a name in my family tree for 40 years. So it was, it was a relief to know that this person actually really existed at some point and not just a name. Mm. It was mixed emotions, to be fair. And your father, who passed away last year of dementia, I mean, he, he, so his, his wish to you was to try to yes. try to sort of unite his adoptive siblings. So you just had one more to go and you've now completed it. Your father will be so proud. He would. He would be very proud indeed. You know, he set me on this journey 40 years ago and I vowed that I would find every single member of his family for him, and I fulfilled that wish for him. And it's just a shame that, you know, he's not around to to enjoy the moment, if you like, that I've that moment where I've succeeded in finding all his siblings. Karen, as Adil said in his introduction, it's sort of joy and sadness, of course, because you have managed to discover who your uncle was, and that would have been hard enough anyway mm. because your father was adopted and his siblings were adopted. So it was already complicated. But then when you discovered that your uncle was patient zero, the first person to die in Britain from AIDS, we now know, that discovery must have sparked in you feelings about the stigma that surrounded his death, the way that he must have died alone, some of the stigma around his, you know, homosexuality at that time, of course, the prejudice that he would have experienced. I know that when we talked to Paul, um, you know, around the time of the documentary, um, the, the friend of your uncle's mentioned that in a bar they went to, the barman had said, they've drunk out of the glasses, let's smash the glasses. You know, that was an experience that your uncle had been living. It must have been quite a, a shock for you to have to process all of that information. It, it certainly was. Um, you know, my first thought was, oh, goodness me, he, he died alone. Um, he, the stigma around 
as you say, being gay was one thing, but dying of AIDS as well. And it it was, my heart really went out to him. And I just thought, I really wish he'd known that he had family and there to support him. And it, it was... It, it was a real shock knowing about the stigma back in the 80s and, you know, thinking at the time that, thank goodness, Princess Diana came along and tried to destigmatize, if you like, um, that touching things and shaking hands and, and, and being around these people, you know, they're human beings like everyone else. And, and to me... You know, my uncle was my uncle, regardless of whether he was gay or not. And it, it really was um, a heart-wrenching moment for me, knowing that, you know, he might have had lots of good friends, but what he really needed was family. And I'm just grateful that he had his kind of adopted family to support him as well, but more than ever, really grateful he had such good friends. Mm -hmm. Paul, it, it's a great testament to the investigative work that you did to discover and put a name and an identity and restore, in a way, the dignity of that the first patient to die of AIDS in this country. How does it now feel for you that you've managed to, you know, give Karen the information that, that she needed and has benefited from and reunite the families as well in some way. Yeah, it's quite emotional actually listening to Karen there and I met her last week and she's the most beautiful person. Um, and when we began searching for John, you know, we had no idea that other people were looking for him too. And we always said from the outset as a team researching that documentary, we only want to tell John's story if those who knew him want us to tell it too. And the resounding answer from everyone we've spoken to who knew John is, yes, please do tell his story. We had always worried about what had happened to him. We want people to know what happened to him. But up until now, that was just coming from his friends because his family tree was quite complicated. I'm sure Karen won't mind me saying that his family background was quite complicated too. It was really hard to find any relatives at all. And then to be contacted by Karen and two other relatives off the back of the documentary yeah. and for them to say, we are so happy that you've told this story, yeah. is just incredible. Mm. Karen, I wonder, did you watch uh, the drama It's a Sin? Because that told the story of what those early patients of AIDS went through. And I think for, you know, even those of us who were alive back then and watched what was happening with the AIDS crisis, it wasn't until I watched It's a Sin that I really understood mm. what it must have been like for <coughs> gay men who, who were infected and the stigma around it. I wonder now, when you reflect on that, you were watching your uncle's story, weren't you? Absolutely. The first thing that went through my mind after seeing the report on the news was I had watched It's a Sin, I'd watched it twice, um, and it was... I couldn't believe the stigma around being gay at that time, you know, punishing people for, if you like, for just living their lives, you know, being punished by others and others' views, their prejudices. And it really brought it home to me what he must have gone through and knowing that he was left to die on his own, if you like. Um, that really hurt, thinking trying to put into context the drama and trying to put into context the reality. And that was a reality for my uncle. And, and that really was a heart-wrenching moment for me. Uh, and also, Karen, another, you know, quite lovely thing that's come out of it, you, you got you reunited or met some of your other family members as well by visiting your uncle's grave. Yeah. How was that? I mean, that's, that's always a fantastic moment, isn't it? Oh, it was. It was absolutely amazing. As I said before, people are just names, but when you actually get to meet them and share stories... And I actually felt this instant connection with them because we had John in common and, you know, we had stories that we... Well, I didn't have stories. I only had what happened to him at the beginning of his life. But at least Pam and Paul were able to fill in the other bits for me, you know, the bit about him working on and cruise ships and things like that, that was really interesting. And it actually helped put some missing pieces, the, the jigsaw puzzle, mm. 
together. It was it was a wonderful moment for us both, and we're we're all keeping in touch even now. Karen, it's an incredibly touching story, and I'd like to think that your dad is looking down now and so pleased that you have brought all his siblings together, and you've managed to speak to, uh, speak to Uncle John as uh, speak to uh, the relatives of Uncle John, and uh, it's just a fantastic moment. So thank you so much, Karen, for joining us uh, this morning. Yeah. And Paul, I have to say to you, honestly, no, I was thank just you. just just. You know, hearing what Susanna said, he said there, well, back then we ignored that community. We were ignorant about that community. Society was prejudiced about that com you know, community. And now, here today, we can't possibly ignore them. You know, it's just fantastic, and that's what you've done, and it's just brilliant. Yeah, and, and these stories haven't been told because they were quite deliberately covered up at the yeah. time, not necessarily John's, but more generally, people didn't want to talk about anyone dying of AIDS because of the stigma that existed. And what's been amazing, and I'm not a particularly superstitious person or a man of faith, but when we've been researching this documentary, it felt as though John's story wanted to be told all the time. There's some crazy coincidences, like Karen, for example, uh, her father asked her to look for his siblings the day before John died. Of course, they didn't know that John even existed or that he was about Gosh, to die. Right. But 40 years on, and we finally got hold of John's photo 40 years to the day that he died. We finally managed to look at him. It just felt as though mm. yes. this man wanted us to tell the world what had happened to him. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thanks so much, Paul. Thank you, Karen. Incredible stuff.